Meanwhile, in Russia, a guard at a gallery, an art gallery, is getting in trouble because he wanted to be a part of the fun and express himself artistically. You might have seen headlines like this going around Russian guard vandalized by a Russian painting vandalized by bored gallery guard who drew eyes on it. And in fact, you can see there that with a pen, little tiny beady eyes were added to a painting. Uh, I probably don't need to tell you which painting it is. You probably already know, but it's uh, Anna Leporskaya's three figures painted mm -hmm. between 1932 and 34. It's insured for 740,000 British pounds. And the guard apparently got bored, Brian, and added little eyes to it. Listen, um, are, is it art still? Is it? I think this, I think it's more valuable now. You have it's another story. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. I, this is, and and it's 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 the version, the iteration of the painting with the guy with the board security guard drew the face on it. I mean that that mm -hmm. adds value to it to me. I don't know. Yeah, I would actually I would fact check that graphic that I read. It says that it was done between 1932 and 34. No, it was done between 32 and 2022 because it's only now been finished. <laughs> anyway, um, I love the level of information they provided. The curator of the exhibition, uh, Anna Rush, Rashetkini, said the painting was vandalized with a Yeltsin Center branded pen. They went very in depth into how much pressure he used. I, I think they think they can uh, repair it. And she goes on to say his motives are still unknown, but the administration believes it was some kind of a lapse in sanity. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I doubt that it was boredom. Maybe. I mean, it wasn't actually boredom. It's definitely not boredom. God, I just, mm -hmm. God, you know what's missing on that painting? <laughs> I just, this has been itching at me for years. I'm not taking any longer. I'm so bored at this place. Anyway, yeah. By the way, a little bit more of historical context. In 2019, a man was sentenced two and a half years in prison after attacking a painting of Ivan the Terrible in a different museum, tearing it with a pole from the barrier protecting the work. That same work was attacked back in 1913 by a mentally ill man who slashed it with a knife three times. God. Which leads me to believe that the problem isn't with people, it's that that painting might be cursed. And in about 90 years, I would watch out. Because I think can it's the eyes be, again. do you know if, if it can be repaired? They said that he didn't use a lot of pressure, so it is possible. But the area that he painted on had been protected with our author's varnish, it said. So. Maybe, maybe. Got it. Okay, good. Yeah. I yeah. God, I hope They'll they can best. get rid of the eyes. If they don't, if they can't get rid of the eyes, I would advocate adding a nose and a mouth. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm completed at this point because I can't stand the fact that it's totally <laughs> it bothers me. Yeah. Don't let Brian Unger near that painting. And meanwhile, in. Meanwhile, in space, uh, Elon Musk's SpaceX had a bad week. They said that a geomagnetic storm wiped out 40 of the 49 Starlink satellites that they launched into orbit last week. I want to give you a little bit of information about how this works. But first, you should know that the satellites that were destroyed are in the process of re-entering Earth's atmosphere where they will be incinerated, which is actually the best possible result because it means one, there will not be enough left to endanger anyone on the ground, but also it won't leave any debris in space. So that's a good thing. The bad is that it's expected that about $100 million in hardware was destroyed, let alone the cost of the flights necessary to put them into orbit. So Starlink is gonna be okay though. They've apparently got as of right now, 1915 Starlink satellites still in orbit, sun willing. Brian. Um. The, uh, I heard also that the autopilot on the satellites was terribly dysfunctional and never really worked. No, no, you got to pay attention, man. You can't just like <laughs> just chill out and watch TV. <laughs> You're flying so fast. Hey, yeah. attention. No, they were always trying to change orbit and, and they could not make that tricky left turn in space. No, 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 not at all. Anyway, really fast, I just found this to be interesting. So why were these able to be destroyed? Is this something we should fear for other satellites? Well, not necessarily. You need to understand that these particular satellites were orbiting Earth at about 130 miles away from the surface of the Earth, which is considered very close. So most satellites orbit at higher altitudes and they are immune to what's called the hazards posed by atmospheric expansion because it wasn't directly the storm 
that destroyed the satellites. What happened is that the storm added kinetic energy to particles in our atmosphere. And according to a Dr. Lewis consulted on this story, it says that the atmosphere kind of puffs up as a result of that. That increases drag on the satellites, which then took them out. And apparently many of the scientists were wondering why it is that they chose such a, such a shallow orbit. They say at the very least again, this would not pose a risk of space debris to other satellites. So in the end, it might be the best outcome. You know, in a world where people don't even understand vaccines help guard you against viruses, you, you've confused even more people with that <laughs> explanation of kinetic energy. And I, 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 I think we're gonna have trouble rallying the nation to, to, mm-hmm. to care about what, and, and Musk is aware of this, that's why he does this. That's true, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, we'll have to check and see. Anyway, the Starlink uh, like from satellite beamed internet is expected that it will be ready to go by the end of the year, despite this problem. Of course, they also said that the Cybertruck truck would be ready a couple of years <laughs> ago, so who knows. <laughs> For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.